Oh, that's the wrong one. No, this is the right one. See, that's the right one. Hello, how are y'all? Hey, morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Give me a call later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was talking to Steve. We're going to talk all about stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, I kind of got a plan for what we, what I want to cover on that Sunday. Okay. Um, at least get a start on it, and then we'll do uh, – Sunday Steve will start off with some basics. Um, we'll do a basic structure, and then we'll go from there. Uh, if we have time, we can do a simple diving pattern, but I want to get the um, – structural one out because we don't have to really crank it down as hard as we normally do the regular lashing uh -huh. but you uh, know it gives you an idea of how to follow a, a certain pattern and we can go from there i like that yeah i've i've done it with canoes many times but i was always being told pull here right as opposed to we're going to make a pattern and this is the pattern yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So I told Steve uh, uh, about a few more pictures that I needed uh, because it's great that he had those top shots or mm -hmm. especially with the diamond patterns, you can actually see how the diamond is laid out, but you don't get to see a side view on it so you can see how it lays, whether it's inside when we come around or if it goes to the outside when we come around. Yeah. It also doesn't show a crossover when we start doing things that way. So... Once he gets that, we'll go from there. And um, keep in mind, I am nowhere near uh, what a lot of the others who have been doing it for a lot more years than I have, you know, are. So we'll go over the basics and stuff that way. But at least it'll get uh, get in what we kind of got to do and all that stuff. I like that. I'm a clean uh, slate, Gary. Basics work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was lucky enough where Kala uh, was still coming out and helping with uh, Hawaii Law. So uh, I got to lunch with him. So that makes it nice. But Kala Thomas is coming out. And he learned actually most of his stuff from, um, from Makali. So through Uncle Shorty, Uncle Chai, through them. So we'll see. Yeah, I, I thought that story that Billy told about the Mao did one set of lashing that was Micronesian, and then they decided no, and then they took the yes. ads to it. Yeah. So as I said, we'll start off with the um, we'll start off with the basics, and we'll go from there. Cool. If anything, it'd be nice to get together. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> If anything, at least it'd be nice to get together. Yes, I like that as well. Yeah, just sitting in, in an open air space. Eating mangoes. Eating mangoes. Oh, Steve, <laughs> I, what happened to your telecommution? It's, uh, at, it's at, te at 9.15. I'm sneezing. My eyes are watering. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. No, I, I, you know, it's really weird, Gary. This has been going on for <clears throat> about a week. And so I wanted to test my fitness. I went out and swam a mile yesterday. Oh, so nice. I don't know what's going on. It may be an allergy. Could um, be. So I'm going to do a, tele, a telemedicine thing at 9.15 so I can hang with you guys for about 10 minutes. And then hopefully that won't take too long and I'll pop back on. Right. He's going to say you're good or you've got a week to live. Either way, it'll be quick. Yeah. <laughs> well, the good news, Mike, is I don't think it's the virus because I've been my temperature has stayed – 97 8 to 98 for since I've, we've been taking temperatures for almost three months now so i don't think you but, can take a uh you, i don't think you can do a mile swim with covid no I think it would impact your lungs right yeah yeah well the, the thing that's kind of um driving us crazy is the past few days uh all of the new cases are out in my side of the island oh man so they had what? They had six cases last week, right? And of the, um, 
of the six, six were actually in the area I'm in, well, at least the community I'm in. Um, then yesterday's one, those, what was it, 10 new cases? No, 13, 13, but 10 was in one family. Yeah, 10 was in one family in Waipahu. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. See? Oh. And then before that, the six new cases were in Waipahu. And oh, they, that is definitely showing that it is, uh, you know, maybe the one they got it from was asymptomatic, but still yet, you know, it's, it's there. And you got to think about it. So the fact that we have right now 16 new cases just in my area yeah. is like, what the hell? But you know, the other, the other thing that we should all be careful about are, you know, the, the military doesn't need to report their cases to us, right? I don't think so. They don't. They don't. And I don't, I, you guys all heard about what happened at Cayenne Point two weeks ago Sunday. Oh, they yeah. had that huge, insane party. Oh, yeah. Yep. And I mean, there was no, I talked to one of the DNLR guys the next day because I had to go out there for a pup watch. And when they came on the scene, the guys were partying. There was no social distancing. Nobody had masks on. And this is the military and they're all over the island. And a lot of them are young kids who think that, you know, they're not going to die. They're not going to get sick, which is such a fallacy. And, uh, you know, we've got a large population of those people on the island. So <clears throat> need to be really careful. Yep. yep, yep, yep. Uh, our, uh, our Lieutenant Governor said that as we reopen, he expected double digits. Um, and that's where we are now. I think yeah. when we start to get past 50 a day, we're going to start to look at trouble. But I think as long as we're below, in the still in the teens, I think we're okay. It's just something you have to keep your eye on, right? Yep. yep. And, and lest anybody think it's going to go away, it ain't, if we get vaccines that are effective, we still need to inoculate the majority of the population. That's going to take time. And, you know, Fauci was talking yesterday. They interviewed Fauci again on um, one of the NPR science programs, that Science Friday thing. And he said again, you know, it's going to take time to get all that done. And uh, he's pretty hopeful that they'll have more than one vaccine. But, you know, you got, what, seven and a half billion people in the world? And, uh, you know, if we don't get most of them, it's going to be running around the population for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yep. And it's always going to be the asymptomatic ones, you know, that's going to be out there. And yeah. You don't, you never know. No, and you, you can't trace, you can't trace those guys. But so far, the, the, our gov the state government here has been doing okay. Ige's not a great mouthpiece, but thank God they got green. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, I, I think we should probably uh, get started, especially since Steve has to leave in a few minutes. Um, uh, so here we are, it's Saturday again. Thank you everybody for coming. Um, we, uh, we were talking, a few of us, about uh, future talks, and there's several things that are up in the air. Um, but one thing I can definitely prepare for next week is uh, a little bit about the museum and voyaging. So there are three things I can, yes, see Jen's something, you know, it was Jen's idea. Um, so uh, the, the, the three things I can talk about, there was, there was an exhibit about the voyage of rediscovery when Hawaii Loa first went out. Um, and uh, I don't really know much, but I can look at that and show some little bits of it. And then I did an exhibit on, um, Hola, uh, sort of Hola Moana. Um, well, I mean, yes, it was called Hola Moana, uh, the name of the exhibit. It was kind of about Malama Honua. Uh, PBS was a major partner. Uh, probably some of you saw that show. And I can talk a little bit more about that because I was, I was the designer for it. And then the third thing I'll talk about is uh, there is an interest in having a voyaging center at the museum. And uh, one of the locations they're talking about is the um, sort of the anteroom to the planetarium, which is this big circular space with this giant sphere in the center that can show the Earth if you want it to. And then you go into the planetarium, you're inside the dome. So having a voyage, your center there, they're talking about. So I can share some ideas for where that goes and get some feedback. Because if that happens, it'll be years in the future. And, and we're going to need help from all of you, really. 
anyway, so so that'll that'll probably be next week unless some somebody amazing comes along and just wants to talk story, in which case I'll I'll step aside. Um, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about lashing because because lashing is uh, um, about to be really big at uh, at at PBS, METC, Hawaii Loa, everybody's doing lashing. All the cool kids, they're gonna do, uh, Kiki is talking about relashing the entire deck because it's screwed down right now. So that's gonna be a major, when it comes back in. Um, Hokulea, they're relashing everything, top to bottom. And then uh, Hawaii Loa, major lashing has to be, re uh, not all of it, but uh, as you saw from Ben's talk last week, there's a lot of lashing coming up. So uh, this is sort of just like a, I don't know nothing about lashing. Um, I think there are people here like uh, Luke knows more about lashing than I do, uh, much less uh, Joy and Ben and Gary um, and probably Anushka, um, but, and Darian. So all those guys know more about me. So I was thinking that we could just like look at some pictures uh, that Steve took and, uh, and then also maybe some websites and just sort of start to talk about I don't have a good understanding of what lashing is, so I'd like a foundation groundwork. Any questions? Sounds good, Michael. All right, so here we go. Uh, oh, and I was gonna try one other thing. Um, <laughs> uh, Patrick. Um, one other thing, I'm gonna try to do a, uh, a play, a recording of um, Aohea Eina, the uh, Pule Ho'omakai. Um, and then we can all go along with it. We'll see. We'll see if it works. I'm not very good at doing audio on the computer, but but we're gonna try. All right. Um, let's see. Can I mute myself and then still play audio? We're gonna check that. All right. Au hea e na maka o kalani, e maliu ma It was working. That was working? That was my question. So you could hear that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, um, so I'm going to mute it restart it and then we'll just all all go at once all right uh i think this is uh, kumuhina uh performing it okay here we go au hea e na maka o kalani e maliu mai i nei i ale o pule he leo ha a ha I got, we got halfway through. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. To stream it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, was, it was a good try, it was a good try. Experiment. All Everybody right. uh, sounded great. Yeah, 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 everybody sounded great. Um, but you heard it until it stopped, right? Every, yeah, until, yeah, great, nine seconds in. All right, we'll try for 12 seconds next time. Um, all right, the other thing, uh, let's see, there's, two websites I wanted to look at uh, briefly. There's this one, which, um, oh wait, you can't see that. Uh, this is the part where people can unmute and talk. It'll be useful if people comment on it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen. Uh, you don't need that, okay. All right, so this is, um, the Voyage of Building an Outrigger Canoe. It's a it's a blog. I personally am not really impressed by these three lines right here. Uh, but but I don't know if anybody has another opinion on this style of lashing. Uh, Yakos to a to a halt. No. Um, and then the, here's uh, Jay Dowsett. He's a canoe builder, member of Friends. Um, and then this is a old style where the uh, 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 pepeao is actually built into the hull and then it's lashed to that. And then here's a, uh, a more traditional one with a, uh, a yako and a, uh, 
a hole and then uh, a vi, y, w, a, e, y. Um, and then here's, a, here's J Dowsett sort of leading us through uh, step by step on how it, how it, how it goes through. So like, just, nope. I think that's just like a regular six man canoe, which I think, yeah, I think when we talk with Bruce, it's not really what we use on, I mean, that's what they, they, learned, they started with hopefully uh, what they knew from six men, but then they changed a lot. That was my understanding, but this is a good six man canoe rigging, just the inside. Okay, um, and it talks a little bit about how the crossover is designed to, to save like this, apparently it says it was had been uh, vandalized. So somebody tried to break it, but they couldn't break through. So it, it's that's part of the design. But moving on from the six man, let me switch over to a different um, a different site that talks a little bit about. Uh, well, actually, we'll just go to uh, the pictures that. Yeah, that one. Hey, Mike. So yeah. Uh, any way you can zoom in on the pictures also. Uh, some of the pictures are kind of small, so it might be hard to see uh, some of the some of the, some of the, uh, the way the lines are running. All right, so that's just an idea. Okay, here, let me uh, try this one and tell me if this is big enough. Um, that one. Share. Uh, yeah, that looks good. That's okay. Um, so if we just start from the beginning here. This is the, the diamond pattern, right? That, that we use nonstop all the time. Um, Gary, can you say how, how does this diamond pattern happen? Is it that you have to go one after the other? How does it get created? I don't really understand how that starts. Well, when, uh, when Kala taught it to me, it's still just one line that's going through. So you have the pukas on the bottom and then you're gonna cross up on the top. So you're gonna come in and out and you're gonna cross over. And the whole idea is you're gonna work from that inside and work your way out. And then of course, where you see the, um, where you see the frap beam, that's just gonna really tighten everything down once you lock it in. Uh, explaining it wise, Ben and Joy are, are much better at explaining. Like I said, I know the, um, the fundamentals of it because that was the first one that I learned was this diamond pattern. Uh, but it holds things are really nicely. There's a, there's a lot of strength behind it. Uh, there's tons of PSI that when you're done is right there, right underneath that entire lock. Uh, the nice part about it is even though it will still rub against each other on the lines, if you do have that one break or two break, you still have the rest holding it in place. So you're not gonna lose anything. Not like some of the other lashings that you've seen. And then I got one more question for you, Gary. So when you said start from the center, right, uh, like right where, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but right where my mouse is, that's like the beginning place right there, right? Well, that's, then, a, that's gonna be your first line. Might be, I'm, I'm gonna speak from my perspective. So if we go from this uh, bottom left puka, right you're gonna run diagonally over. Yeah, like, then you're gonna go into the puka from the back and out the front. And then out and here over. and then back over yeah. here, yeah. So you're just going that you're running a diagonal pattern. Right there, there, there. So it's one line. You're pulling one, it's not two lines? No, you're pulling one line. So one line will stay locked in. So kind of like how we did the uh, stanchions where one side will stay locked on. Uh, even like when we were doing the uh, spreaders for Hiki, one side stays, uh, stays static and you're just pulling that one line. And then the frapping that you were talking about is right here. And that's- Yeah, that's the frapping. That comes later, much and later. After you're all done and frapped, but it looks like here it's going, it's weaving inside and out. Is that correct? Well, yeah, because it's kind of like you're doing a figure eight between the two uh, that are coming up from the left and the right. So very similar to, again, what, what we've done on Hawaii Loa, Hokule, and Hiki. You've, we've seen this type of frapping all over. Okay, and then okay. Unlike Vance's, if you look at Vance's picture, if if you can just shoot to Vance's um, screen we'll see where you see underneath the yako, that's a different type of frapper. It's just around and around and around, uh, as opposed to this 
this weave pattern. Oh, right. What's on Vance's screen right now? Yeah, what's on Vance's screen? Now, I remember when we were doing the, the previous slide that there was also this thing you had to remember of going from the inside of the puka to the, yeah. or the out, outside of the puka to the inside of the wrap. It's like you have to pay attention to which side of the puka you're also exactly. going. Exactly. And then it's, especially because it's a puka, there, it gets to a point where you have to overlay as well because you have a, a specific distance, you know, just a minimal distance that you have and they can go wide. And when you consider with this and you're looking at about nine times you're going through that puka, you're going to have overlay. As opposed to if this was, say, just to hold down one of the, uh, one of the tracings or one of the sheet lines or one of the halyard. Uh, we don't have that nice wide base that we don't have to worry about overlapping these lines. And then sometimes you're starting on one side and then you go to the other side and then you come back to the other side and through the puka, right? Yeah, exactly. Right, and that's what I could never remember. It's like, when, how do you determine that? Is there a rule that you follow? Uh, like I said, I, I'm just following the pattern that Kalat taught me and what we've done in the past. You know, I, the pattern that I've been running has always been the same. Um, uh, that makes it kind of easy for me because I don't have to remember different styles of the same diamond pattern. Um, so it's, it does come a little difficult. Uh, I think it was way, yeah, way. Um, as to the length, I'm going by what I was told. So like the spreaders that we were doing on Hiki, those are like uh, 11 nana. So that's 11 arm, um, arm spans. 11 phantoms? Uh, in, some case, in some cases, it's six. So it just depends as to, I guess, the distance on it. So what I, what I try to do is if I can save the line when we, when we remove it, um, what I've been doing is I've been starting to take measurements of what was on there. And I would add on maybe about another um, uh, half arm span. Just for you know, because we know we've cut off some and stuff that way, just to give me that, just to give me that extra length. Um, otherwise, I don't have that committed to memory as to how to actually measure out how much space I got. I can estimate where, if this is maybe 18 inches going over, or maybe 36 after one full wrap. I know I got to do nine, so that's going to be what nine times 36, and that kind of gives me an idea. But I still got to add on it for play just to be safe. I don't want to be short because you, you really, I'd rather cut long and kind of waste a little, although that seems uh, impractical, that they have a short line and not have enough wraps. So as to the length, Ben and Joy would probably know a lot more about that than I do. Because again, I'm just going off by what I was shown and what I was told while we were doing it. So when you say length, Gary, you're talking about like arm, a, a, a width of your arms, right? Which is yeah. loosely so how many, how how many, many arm arms, lengths and how uh, many that's arms do we need for each line, yeah. Roughly a fathom, fathom, roughly six feet. Roughly, five roughly feet. a fathom, yeah. Yeah, fathom. Um, so, so does anybody know how many fathoms or how many arm lengths it takes to make a standard uh, yako to, to hold? Uh, you're saying 11, Gary, has anybody, I've, I've heard for canoes, six-man canoes, you do 12 to 14, but I don't know if anybody's heard I any think it depends, but I know uh, when we did the spreaders the last time Kiki was out and we were doing all that pulling, uh, Bru uh, Uncle Bruce told us 11. 11. 11 for that front spreader. Okay, uh, here's another, same, same, diamond pattern, but it's only, instead of nine, it's only five, right? Only five, yeah. And you can definitely see where it started and how it went out from the from the inside out. Mm -hmm. um, same, same, except this, oops, sorry. This one looks like, is this part down here? Is that part of the whole thing? Were they doing a triangle? Was it a diamond plus a wrap around the base? Is that, or is that a separate tie? That's a separate tie, I believe. We'd have to see the backside to be 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, and then this is, oh yeah, still yet, the, the woven uh, frapping, but yeah. no, uh, no diamond powder, right? It's just straight up no, and down. Straight through. So that one will be kind of, uh, that one, if you look at it the way, because of the slit, it's kind of like when we do the, uh, our cleats, how just that one section is just straight around and around and around, and then we lock on it. So there is no like diamond pattern or anything on it. It's just a flat, flat wrap. Okay, this, I don't know what's going on here. Oh, I didn't do that one. That one, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Anybody have any ideas? No, I don't, I don't, it doesn't, it, I'm not sure it's a true lashing. It looks like it's a... Where is, where is this on the... Wow. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to figure where this is. I don't know. Steve took all the pictures, and he's he's uh, at a doctor's apartment. Um, yeah. Looking at these, Do I was I just know thinking. What this is? I just wanted to make an observation. I'm just looking at these, and I I put a little bit in the chat already, but I'm curious. Like if you did an inventory of these and, and then located them on the boat. Um, you, you think higher stress points or you know a bigger uh, cross section uh, being lashed is going to need more lashings. Uh, it seems like most of them are, or all of them, are using the same uh, diameter uh, rope, you know, the same type of rope. But as we unlash stuff, it would be might be wise to like inventory it like okay how much rope was used in this lash what type of lashing was used how many loops like a like a reverse engineering method. Uh, i know that with hokalea right now we just cut a bunch of lashings um on the mostly it was stanchions they were taking down all the stanchions uh for the dry dock and uh, Bruce had us save them all. So they're all in a, every lashing, he wanted us to cut them very cleanly so it had one cut and then they're saved so the pattern is present. Uh, most of them are, are some variation on the diamond but not all of them. And some of them were like a, um, something where it was hold, holding at an angle where it's going across on the top and then also wrapping around the base. No, I'm fine. Yeah, I can't quite, I think this is just uh, going around. Pro maybe a diamond, it's hard to say. The top I mean, could be a diamond over um, on top of this stanchion and then coming through. So this would be just a single single puka rather than having a double puka. That's hard, right? Because then you, then you, you're, you're going around every time. You have to come to the back side, but you're coming up around a different hey, way, hey. right? Yeah, so again, this is going to be something that we're going to get real used to too as well, because when we put up our new stanchions on Hawaii Loa, this is something we're going to be doing as well. Um, I know one of the discussions to make it nice is in the puka we're, uh, to place PVC so that it slides smoother and it also helps to protect the wood, keeps the integrity of that hole as well. Um, would there be a risk of the PVC wearing down over time and causing it to um, become? Well, not necessarily because what uh, what, you, what we can do with the PVC is, of course, we're going to flat sand it from the surface. But the other thing that I've noticed that uh, would help with this angle is uh, if you've ever taken a bowling ball to get drilled, right? They have that sanding piece that goes, it's like a plunger sander. So what it does is it rounds out that, that inner uh, cut. So instead of having a sharp edge, you get a rounded edge. So it's smooth and it's not cutting into the line. So I've been looking for that as well, that, uh, that sanding piece. I think I finally found a place I can get it from, but it makes that inside of the PVC nice and smooth, you know, right at, right at that cut edge. I think Bob actually had me do that with a piece of PVC pipe for the Lua on Hiki on Lua, um, using a rough, like, sort of, I don't remember the name of the tool, but I could point it out to you, and it did the job just fine. Oh, like um, a rasp? Yeah, rasp, that's what it was. Okay, yeah, that does it too. The only reason I like having that plunge sander is I can attach it to a drill. It doesn't, <laughs> look 
And of course, because we can um, adjust the grit on the sandpaper, we will probably get a smoother, um, smoother cut on it as well. You go to the next one. There we go. Uh, so that's no diamonds. That's a cleat, right? Straight up cleat. Yeah. And that's traditional for for putting in the cleats. Well, that's uh, only I've I've been taught how to do that one. So uh, Joy might know more. Any thoughts, Joy? Is there other ways to do cleats? I think she's driving right now. Oh, She'll okay. Oh, okay. A little bit. Um, okay. But anyway, it's it's basically it's. I don't understand how you even tighten this though, because it's it's a, it's it's two separate lines. Is that what we're looking at? It's they're not it's crossing. Yeah, it's two separate lines. You're gonna uh, hook it on each on each wrap. So. So it's got to be fixed. What the one part has to be the beginning place has to be fixed, right? So you can hook yeah. you. So one end will be fixed again, and then. What will happen is you'll come up and then you'll frap up here and tighten down up here as well. And that'll help bring it down to that tight lock. And you can see how tight it already is because it's not collapsing on each other. Maybe one or two might be pulled over uh, from the tight uh, from the from the locking, but other than that, the rest are all nicely flat. And that's that's how you, you got a really good solid uh, hook on the lines. So, so you're gonna you gotta have this this lock on both sides. So oh, both ever, sides if, have a have a have oh, a. Both rock. sides will have it, yeah, because you're gonna have that one loose line that's that you're gonna hook it on, and then you still have that side that's static, right? That's locked down. You're gonna hook it on that one as well, and then you're gonna lock it on the other side of it. Uh, so when you fix it, where would you, f where where would you attach the beginning to to start the wrap? Uh, usually, the, uh, what what I've been what I've been told and the way I've seen it done and I've done it too is, I'll lock it down to so like this is, uh, what piece is this? Okay, so if this is a spreader piece. I'd probably give it a couple wraps around the spreader and lock it on the spreader and then start the wrapping that way. So and it'd then be down on the spreader and then everything that you've locked down then comes off and becomes the the frap at the end becomes one of the locks at the other side yeah. or side. yeah all right and like i said that's the way i've seen it done that's what i was shown to do it so that's the way i do it uh there are there other ways of doing it probably but you know i just haven't been shown those others so uh i'm until I'm told otherwise, I'm just gonna keep doing what I was shown and what I was told on how to do it. And then this is not a diamond, uh, and this is also a spreader, right? Yeah. Uh, but in this one, they just started at the center and went straight out and never crossed over except, I guess so the diamond is broken like up. Crosses, yeah, exactly. It looks like the crosses are in there. The crosses are here yeah. as, and then it's flat across here. Is there any advantage or is it just a different style? I think that's just a different style. I haven't been explained if there's any advantage to that one. Although I think honestly with this one, because it's flat, uh, maybe it's just uh, as we, if you have to ever walk on the, um, on this spreader, it, it is nice and flat. You're not rolling anything because the, the diamond pattern can get a little higher as you start building up. Uh, I'm not sure why they use this one here. Like I said, I wasn't it wasn't explained to me, uh, but it works. <laughs> so uh, this is one of this is one of the tongues that's going out, right? Because this is where we're dropping that anchor, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's anchor holes the right over here. Side. That's opening yeah. for the anchor and the toe and all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, ben says this is the hardest one to do, um, maybe because it's you have to keep it flat. You gotta keep flat. it flat. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, and then Larry oh. mentioned, go ahead, Ben. So this one is really really hard to do because what it, 
if you were to just take off the frapping, the the lines they don't um they don't actually cross per the holes on the bottom. So if it, so take a look at the one on the left, right? So if that's where you started, it's gonna if you start from the left hole on the left one, right? You're gonna refeed, you're gonna come up and over and refeed on the same side, not a not across. You're gonna feed Oops, back down sorry. on the left on the forward side. Wow. You understand? So what what's gonna happen is it's it's kind of like um what that Filipino stick name uh stick game. Right? So you're gonna cross it over parallelly. You know what I mean? Oh, so it's, yeah. it's kind of U shaped then rather than a diamond shape then. Yes. Okay. Oh. I don't know if I'm explaining it right. You guys understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're going it's from down side this way. It's coming and, down this way and then it's brought together. Yeah. So okay. imagine if, if there was two lines and they both went forward aft through the okay. two the two port starboard, right? A port ship. And you just took those took one line, put it in the middle, took the other line, and crossed it over to the opposite side. You know what I mean? So, so if I put if I put the, the port one down first, yeah, I'm gonna take the starboard one, put it over, and put it on the port side. You understand? So, so it runs under under the um, under this board deck. Yes. Okay. Underneath the deck, it'll run port starboard. Okay. On top over the spreader, it runs forward aft. Okay, okay. And that's the reverse of the diamond, right? The diamond does the, the exact reverse on that. So the, no, so the, the diamond is, is exactly what Gary said. It, it, it's very high profile, right? Uh-huh. So when you have a spot where you know there's going to be high traffic or, you know, like lots of, um, work or where gotta you know what i mean you want this one is a low profile because it's only one rope thickness right you go back to the diamond one it's like two or three thicknesses high yeah because it, it crosses. Yeah, so yeah at least you know what i mean so the, the thing is like i don't know almost an inch not inch but maybe not an inch maybe like three quarters high depending on what size you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really hard to show th this one. I mean, explain it without showing it. But when, you, when you're lashing this one, the trick is you're not gonna hooky super tight until you get to maybe three or four in. Because that first two, all it, all it is is pulling against each other, right? Can you, can you zoom in, Mike? Get yeah. Bigger. Uh, second here. Um, zoom in. <laughs> How about this? Uh, that was supposed to get bigger. All right. Didn't happen. Uh, well, so maybe not. I can, I can, I can do this. Okay. So a lot of the tension then, Ben, comes later than, especially with that, uh, with the frapping then. Other than just the the hook, the the hook it through out after this, uh, after say the third wrap. Yeah. So probably about the, the like, I don't know. I guess uh, I'll. I think when we were doing it, we'd, we'd put like about four in, just kind of really snug. And then like on the fifth one or whatever, that's when we start hooking. Cause it's, okay. all it is is the tension side to side that 
is holding it, right? Because all he's doing is putting it over, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, okay, so there you go, there over, you go. Okay, like, okay, so when you come over, are you working your way in or outside up, in? The, yeah, okay, see. So you see the middle one. The very middle. Okay, I wish you could see my mouse. Put it right, right yes. there. Right. So that's the first one, right? Yeah. And then to the right looks like the second one. Uh-huh. And then when so you, you come back around, you go to the left. Right. So you see the okay, the best example is the third one. You see that third one right there? Yeah. On the on the left. This one yeah. right here. So so the the first one started on the port side. I'm just going to assume that the port side is our left. Or, sorry, it started on the starboard side. It looks like. I can't really tell. Right. It's still, the first one started on the starboard side. Right? Because then the, the second one, number two, came from the left, came from port, and was crossed the whole forward to half of it is crossed over and laid flat on the top. So your okay. crossing is going to happen on the sides instead of on the top. Yeah, 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 I noticed that. Right, and then the third one comes from the starboard side again over those two and laid flat on the top and crossed over. Yeah. You see it? That's this one right here. Okay. That's the fourth one. That's the third yeah. one is the one right crossing the right. Uh, yeah that there one that's the third one so you see how okay. it just kind of you take the whole you take the whole loop and place it down on the opposite side okay okay so the crisscross is just on the sides it's not on the top Right. And it compresses it that way. Okay. So this, the, like I said, this one, the only thing in the beginning holding it from slipping out is the two lines pushing against each other side to side, right? Yeah. It's not, it's not a pull down kind of hooky. It's just make it stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you see how should I, should I scroll down a little bit, Mike? Yeah. Uh, you can see the bottom part where the frapping is. Uh, oh, that's not it. Uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> so they worked from inside the hole, they worked from the part closest to the spreader out. Yeah. Okay. So it starts. Here, that's the part. No, 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 that's the last one. That's the last one. This is the that. first one right here, yeah. and this is also the first one on that side. Yeah. All right. Cool. This one is really, really hard because you that first two, like I don't know how many times, and it just keeps slipping. So you gotta, you gotta know just. How, how much tension to put on it so it doesn't slip and then you adding every time you're adding just a little bit more and then finally like the fifth one you can give them all right that was very informative all right slide where we show and it's then, still if we if we start up if we come up port side we go down port side if we come up starboard side, we go down starboard side, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, no wonder that thing slips because there's nothing holding it in place. Correct. That's that's why I said the, the only thing holding it is the port to starboard tension on the, the, the lines itself. Yeah. And then if somebody said, I want you to make this, would they say make make the non-diamond? Is there a name? Uh, I don't really know the name for this one, actually. 
but hello there we go uh this one well the uh, uh that's just called well that's just a that's diamond just right a diamond turn, yeah. and then i go back to that uh-huh uh you see how you see how much higher it is profile wise yeah because it crosses over so many times right it's like four times it's as many <laughs> as is it, it the other one is only as thick as the line this is as thick as as many times it crosses over doubles triples quadruples yeah so it, it's kind of thick yeah but over here on the rail they don't care because right that's you're not really gonna be putting whatever on top of it right it's yeah we're not walking on the rails And there is I, the other one. The, this picture over here is a little fuzzy, but is there a difference between this? Looks like a diamond that's that starts low and go, gets big. Is that just a so this illusion? is a different kind of diamond, the one on the on the spreader to the hole. Yeah, it's that one again is a lot trickier too, because you you crossing. This one is a crossing twice, or. Weaving under twice, I should say. This one is tricky. This that one is tricky too, because you. And if you go back to it, you'll see it. It, it weaves over under. I don't know. Oh, under over one. under over. Is this this yeah, is this yeah, similar yeah. to that? Yeah, that's the one. So if you look. Uh, I can make it bigger if you like. Yeah, you see how it... See how it goes... And across... Across... Oh, try wait, try wait, try, scroll down a little bit. Oh, you know why? Because this one, he. So you see this last, this. Uh, on the right side, Mike, see the most bottom diagonal line? The most bottom. Right? On the right side, the, the start most. Of the, wrap, the start of the frap. You see that? This right here. Oh, the start of the frap. This right here or. No, no, on the top. On the on top. This one, one right more. here. This the one right one up. This one right here? Yeah, but see, it comes back around under, and then it's that last. Oh, yeah, it comes here and then comes around like that, right? No, no, back some more, back some more. The other way. Uh, so it comes this follow way? The, yeah, follow the line that way, and then it comes, it goes underneath all the last Oh, things. here, and then here? No, no, up, up, up. It comes all the way over to here? Yeah. No, that's that's continuing the lashing. You want the very beginning. So that w that one you highlighted. Yeah, that's this actually one. the first. That's the second frap, right? The first one goes underneath. The first you one see? is here. No, no, no. Oh, you can't see it. Is what you're saying? You can't see it. Yeah. So, yeah. right where on the right of your highlight. Uh huh. That right here. Put put your mouse on the highlight. Uh, right uh -huh. here. Yeah. So directly above your mouse, there's yeah. a. Oh, that, this that's, right here. Yes. That's the start. So what he did, what Uncle or whoever did this was doing, they were overlapping. So they made the diamond in the middle of the spreader, and they're overlapping correspondingly. I guess you would say four and half. So they would wrap, they would cross one time and then on the, the first crossover the same way, they went either forward and then the next one, instead of going forward again, they went aft. So you, could you see how this one ended up in the middle? Yeah. That was probably the start. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Because there's no way, if you just keep going one way, 
it's going to end up in the middle, right? You know what I mean? So it had to cross over every time? So where does that line come out then? The one that's coming down that you highlighted. Where does it come out? Yeah, go, go, go up, go up. It's, it's, it's the very beginning in the center of the diamond. Right, right in the here? Very, very, no, right, right, right there, that one. Yeah. So that's the, so this is probably what they tied off. Yeah, and then that's the very first one. So what they were doing was they were centering the diamond, right? You know what I mean? Uh-huh, so it becomes the center and then everything builds off of that. It builds four, uh, four, uh, so you look at the weave pattern. All right, you have a line going this way, but you also have a line going that way. Right. Then you look at the next one, and then it, it yeah, it's a line going this way. Yeah. And it all starts with something underneath everything over here. But this is so good to be able to understand how to dissect the knot, right? How to dissect the wrap and, and, and start to understand it. So it doesn't just yeah. look like a beautiful thing, but it's actually, you can understand the physics of it. Yeah, it's still, I'm, I, am, I, am, I am less confused, but until you, I think Gary has it right, until you have it in your hands, it's hard to feel how the shape goes. But still, to know that this is the goal, and this, this is it's this is probably the most beautiful of all the wraps I've seen. It it, it looks almost like a flower the way it, it opens up. Imagine doing this with like that rainbow gradation rope, you know, that it changes color as it moves along so you could track it coming in and out. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Um, so Mike the, you can see in this right down at the bottom center of the screen, uh huh, uh, right above where at least I'm, yeah where you are there. If you follow that, if that's the center of the clock and you follow the line up towards eleven o'clock, yeah that way, you can see that at the bottom of the screen, that was the first one, and the one, and you can see how how it worked. It worked Is this then the where it comes back around then right over here? Oh, that's that's the very last one, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the, my my only observation is is uh, if you uh, undo your lines one by one, like, erase your highlight yeah. one by one. Oh, stop. Okay. So the, the last one that you just took out. Yeah. Yeah, that one right there. So so. So you just drew a line that way. If you follow the ropes going in this way, you can see the one at the bottom was first, and the one all the way outboard was the one. I'm talking about these now. I'm talking about... Oh, the ones going this way? Yeah. So that's the last one, and you can follow follow that towards the bottom of the screen, at least on that side. So I would, so what, what Larry's saying is you just follow the one that's on top, right? Yeah. One that's on top is the last one. The one right below it is the next. And then below that and below yeah. that. So your your yeah, your crossings for the diamond was actually a V at the beginning. And that V walked up. And the same thing was happening on the other side. So so that's how you get the diamond. So the the one thing that's not clear to me is uh uh, move your cursor slow, right, you were right there, a little further up, further up, up to the right, up to the right, stop there, go down, just a smidge, go to the right, a little more, a little more, all right, right where you are right now, that, that line right there, um, no, the one that's uh, got the positive slope, yeah, yeah, that one right there, so that one there goes halfway. That's because that's the very start of the knot. Hmm. Okay. That, that's the one that gets tied off before you even started. Okay, there you go. All right. So they ended on the other side. Yeah. That, that's why this one is in the middle. Okay. So, all so they did was actually going underneath that line? 
at some point you have to put something underneath it like that one that's going from 5.30 to 11 o'clock. Like this one right here? That one had to go underneath it, right? No, no, so this is the start of the frap, right? That one that Michael's got his mouse oh, on. Frap. Okay, yeah. That's the start of the frap. But it's also the first line. So it was the one that was tied off and then it was untied at the end and it became the frap. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. That's why it's able to be on top of everything else. And yeah. cross over everything. Right. Although yeah. it's only crossing over right. four of them. There's another four lines here that were on the outside of it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the perfect example. So you see that, that line, right? You see how it's, it's in the middle of the four and four on each side, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's got, there's four here. There's yeah. So if you're just thinking about the ones going from, I don't know, like four to 10, right? This it's going to be, yes. So that's going to be, and then make the other ones green or something. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. So you're going to, I think it was, it looks like, Okay, so that white one is the first, then it looks like they went to one, the yellow, and then when they came back around to the same direction, it went red, red, and then yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, red. So it was building out from that center point. But it, yeah. it built from the center out, and that's... that's can, you put, that's, can you put arrowheads on the, on the colored lines? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're wrapping in that direction. But not. And because then are these also going up or are these ones going down? Like no, this? they're going the same way. They're yeah. going the same, same way. direction. Yeah. Cool, thanks. So, th th yeah, this reminds me a little bit of a uh, six man canoe where um, towards the last step. So Mike, because we've done lashings together at the club where, um, you know, you're, you're going over diagonal and you got to make sure your teammate doesn't get ahead of you. And sometimes they do and then you got to unwrap it. Uh, so Mike, now put the numbers next to them. Oh, okay. Just a second here. Wait. Uh, oh wait, this is one. This is one. Uh, can I have a, is there a text? There's that's text. the tie off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's not good. And then just All keep right. in mind, Mike, that it's going to, instead of running at this positive slope, you're going to have that negative slope in the same direction as the yellow and the red. Yeah. So this would be two, four, six, eight. Is that right? Yeah. And that's what this, it looks like. This would be uh, three, five, Seven and not oops, nine like that. Yeah, no, no, that's right, that's right. Awesome. All right, we took apart a, a, a lashing that was entertaining. <laughs> okay, all right, uh, let's see what, what other, other interesting pictures we have here. Um, Can we take a screenshot? Lines and then uh, close that. Okay, that's where we were. Okay, um, and then all right, that's where we left off. Uh, hey Ben, what was that one for? Mike, you go back to that one that yeah. we didn't know where it was. Oh yeah. Uh, this one. That one, yeah. Anybody have any clue? Isn't that on the cleat? One of the cleats? That's a saddle, I think. Is it? I can't remember either. I just remember shooting from aft to forward. And that should be the sequence they're in. But I, uh, I moved them around, yeah. Okay. Then, then I don't know where this is. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's a saddle, no? It looks like one, doesn't it? 
Yeah, I don't know. It's not a lot going on there. Uh, it looks to me like uh, clove hitches. Yeah. Yeah. It'll probably get replaced. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. This is this is unique, right? This is only done for the uh, hoy. Is that correct? This is a hoy lashing, and this is that what you were talking about earlier, Gary, where it was it was um, straight trapping. I can't really get much bigger. Let's see. So this one again yeah. is a loose one, yeah. Yeah. You don't make this one tight. You use the frapping to make it tight. You're just putting tension on it so it holds the the hoy uli. Uh, vertical, nice and aligned, yeah. And is it, is the line going around like this and then going around and then over here? Is that, is that the pattern? So the, yeah, so the two separate last, no, no, that's wrong. Like They're separate guys. There's two, you have the two port, teams doing this. The port is, is stays port and the starboard stays starboard. Yeah. So it's like that. Yeah. And, and then, then Ben, don't you have the, one side over the other. Yeah. And then yeah, somebody and then, standing on the back end of the hoy, making sure it's centered properly as well, if I remember. Because <clears throat> you're putting, you want to have the tension equi, equal on both sides, right? Yeah, you're just trying to make the pin stay vertical, yep. straight up and down. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the hardest part of this one was you don't want it too tight or you're, you're going to have a hard time with the uh, swing. And I remember when... Um, when I was helping with this one, I wasn't there for the whole thing, but it was, I think we had to take it apart two or three times. Um, right. First, way too tight. Second time was way too loose. Uh, but I remember this one was difficult to get that tension just right. Yeah. Most people, they don't, they just try to hook you that, those loops, but you, that's not what you want. You just want to put just enough tension Equally, same time, port starboard, so that that pin just stays vertical. And that's it. And then you, all your tension is in the frap. So are you saying you don't hooky until the frap? No, no. I'm saying you're not giving it, you know, super hard. You're just making it tight, like a one-man a one-man one hooky. You know, not you're not even a one man hooky, you just kinda well for me anyway, I just you know, kinda lean back and pull on it to make it tight. Yeah, you still keep tension. You still have to keep tension, but it like it's not like we're doing how we would hooky on a yako. Okay. And then that's pretty straightforward, right? Straight up fraps, flight, flat lines, no diamond. No. No crossing either, right? It's just straight hooky and then tighten at the end, frap at the end. Yep, looks like it. And then this. This is, is another tricky one. I don't, this one I, Bro, you need like 26 fathoms for this one or something, <laughs> depending on whose fathoms, whose ananas they are. Oh. So yeah, you're telling me that's all one line? No. So the two skinnier ones in the middle are separate. Yeah. Okay. Then the, the big ones on the outside are separate. But the ones on the outside are all one line, though. Either side, one line, huh? Yes. Whoa. So you gotta imagine this is only half of it. Yeah. There's on the outside of the canoe, kind of too. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that kills me is right here. You see these twists. Yeah. 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 Even I have hard time with this one. Cause you see the. <laughs> so it's. It's kind of like a mix of the diamond and the other one I was trying to explain. Yeah. Are these from Mao? 
it, did Mal teach us these? Oh, that, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. Mike, can you zoom in on the yeah. pages uh, inside one? Oops. Uh, yeah, this one is this one is a little clearer on this one. Um, yeah. Let me see if I zoom in a little bit. Uh, oops, not there. Where are you? There we go. Um, yeah, that's not as. There we go. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's so flat along along. This line right here, there's like there's like no, it's just perfectly flat, and then up here it crosses over, right? Yeah. And you know when I mentioned that twenty six, twenty seven ananas, that's not even for the one on the left. It's actually, I think the measurement I'm talking about is the one on the right. This one. Oh. Yeah, I think that's the one that was more like between twenty five and thirty ananas or fathoms, depending on whose it was. Because if you have Kelly. Doing her fathom <laughs> is a bit different than if Uncle Norman would be doing a fathom, right? But this one, hey Ben, these two, you're running the two lines at the same time, though, right? We're not locking down one side and only one running around, right? Uh, I gotta think. I haven't done this one in ages. Um. Because I'm thinking that's the only way we're going to get this crossover at the top is we have the two lines coming in at the same time and then we can cross them at the top. Well, two, oh, one, one line, one. two ends. Yeah, so you're running the two ends at the same time rather than just one going around. Yeah, you got to find the center of your line, place, and that's, um, yeah. that's interesting. Hey, where, well, do, you, where do you What it, that What it does is, that knot. so you see... Uh, okay, so the one on the right, the, the set on the right. Like the right start, here? No, 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 the whole, the whole lashing, the this right one. lashing. Yeah, okay. Okay, so the start was on the left of it, on the far side. Put, put right your, here? No, 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 no. One um, on the far, yeah, that right where your mouse is, right there. That's the start of it, right? And then it came, it comes down, right? Comes down, you yeah. right. Oh, all the way there, and then it goes through here. So, it, so the start was on the bottom where your mouse is, right? They probably went through the hole and tied off on the bottom. And then you see, so the second one is going to come over from the forward side again. So go over to the start of the yellow on the other side, Mike. Yeah. So this, you see how they skip a space. And the second one is actually, like in sequence, is the third line. Uh, wait, this, this so right that's, here? That's, no, that's, that is number... Three. Okay, so this is one. Yeah. And then number two starts over here. Is that oh, where it starts? Oh, one more to the right. It starts over here. Right. Yeah, that's oh, number two. Over. Right, so they, they leave a space. Oh, or, yeah, you leave like a very little space. And then you see how it comes over, follow the line. Yeah. Okay. It comes, comes back up. to the left of the first one. And then there, like that? Yeah. Okay. And then so it comes, it's got, number three is going to come back around and fit in between one and two. So there? So it comes over, yeah. right? And come down. Go across, it can cross over, yeah. Do you and see it come? It's going to come it, this way. Right? right. So it comes so. over. Number two, and then no, no, under, yeah, so uh, yeah, and then down this way, or no, 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 right. This is gonna no, no. Back. one to the right. Yep. You were you're right the first time, right here. That one, no, one to the right. Oh, right here. Look at the corner. Yes, yes, yeah. That's number three. Back. In between. Yeah. 
Well, that makes sense. Okay, so then number four leaves the space from number two. Okay. Comes over. Like here? Yes, that's number four. Yeah. And it fits right in the gap between one and three. Okay. Oh, and then number five comes back through between, here over yeah. four. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and so you work your way from, you in this case, you work pattern? your way from left to right. Yeah. You see the pattern? Yeah. This, so this one, you leave a little gap so you can put the subsequent wrap in it. That's the easy one. The one hard one is the one on the left. <laughs> oh, because you're not, <laughs> yeah. Because this has two different things going on, right? There's two different. Because you're feeding out back on the outside now. It would be so great to have a catalog of these and the names for them. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it would I don't also know. Usually I'm just following and then once I see what like Uncle Bruce is doing, oh yeah, I remember that one and then I continue it. You know what I mean? Like I don't even know the names for them, which is bad, but. <laughs> hey Ben, I got a question for you. I'm gonna try to do it with a, with a, a little sketch here. So my, my experience with the six man, so, so my, what I'm going to lead to is the question is where these are the orders of the ropes with, um, with the outrigger crew, the canoe, uh, you just start with a line, but then the, the, the line, the line gets a loop put in it. So you got, you got one whole line and eventually the line gets halved and you've got a, a little loop at the end. Mm -hmm. And the very first move that you make is if you have the, you know, the canoe and then your Yako, actually it's like this, the, the first, the first move is take the two ends of the rope, put it through the loop, get it tight. So then you have the two, the two pieces you want to connect together. And then you've got a team that you know, they've got two ends of the line that you work your way out. Right, because the uh, on the six man, what you what they're doing is they're using one line to do both sides. Right. So, um, so when you that last lashing that we had on the screen, right, saying this is the first row or the first the first crossover. Do you start with the same kind of a loop at, at some point, and then? No, 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 that one is different. So, that's gonna break. You're just starting. So what you're, what you're thinking, Larry, what, yeah, what you're thinking. So, imagine on the six man, if you just did one side only. So, instead of making that double line to start with, you just just imagine like you only started with one line and you're all, we're only doing one side of the canoe with a separate line. So in the beginning, uh, oh, right. so so make this so quick. So the one that we're looking at right now, right? These are two separate ones. Left and right, two separate. Yeah. So the, one right. on the, the big one, the, the big one on the left, is because that one goes through the hull, right? Yeah. To the outside of the canoe. Right. right. This one, number two, Mike labeled it, is just. The Yako to the Vi. Right. Yeah, it's just a straight up and down. The one on number one has a matching, uh, but opposite on the outside of the canoe. So for these lines, whether one or two, is every line that we're looking at running clockwise around the ship structure? being one line yes. i know it's one line but is every single line going around clockwise whereas in a six man because you have the loop you've got one, one half of the line going clockwise one half of the line going counterclockwise and with each loop they're crossing each other and making the, 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 the last right line. no so it, it's only one you're only using one line and you're crossing over itself all in one 
counterclockwise yeah. or one clockwise direction. Yeah, yeah, whatever the direction may be. Okay. You're right. It's okay. only one line. So the the beginning tie off is just a straight tie off. There's no split like how you do on the six man. Okay. All right. One right. super long line. Okay. That's a big helpful clarification for me. So Ben on, the, on number one, then that left part is it. If you look at my picture, is that this the other side of it here coming out? Uh, right. See my picture? I'll stop. No, sharing. that's Hawaii law. Hawaii law is different. I see. That's just the what yeah. what you're pointing at, Vance, is the um the mo'o tensioner. That's the one. If you look inside the hole, it just goes straight across, and it's just frapped. That's all that is. It's it's just to hold the the mo taut against the hull. So try to go back. Left side of number one does come out of the canoe. It does. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do we? We don't have a share. Okay, try go back to the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Because this is just. Zoom out. Oh, I see the whole thing. Uh, here, wait just a second. View present that. Okay, so this is inside the hole, right? This is inside a compartment. So, and then you see on the left, there's the mole cap, the brown on the top. Oh, this right here. Yeah, yeah and then, yeah. And then right next to the combing on the right, you have the hatch. That's the inboard side of the hull. Yeah. The combing and then the hatch, right? That's the inboard. So if you were to look on the outboard side on the left, right? If we were to imagine outboard of the mole cap, there's going to be a matching lashing to this big one on outside. Holding everything together. So just just imagine this is only half the lashing. Yeah. So if you had a mirror on the very left hand side, you'd see two. Correct. Some... Correct. So imagine the, the fathoms on that guy. And this is very functional. This is what's holding everything together this is one of the more foundational lashings i would imagine yes yes so i have a question for you ben so big picture when you're actually putting the when you're actually building the boat uh is there an order of the lashings so very much like with an engine when you put the the engine block together, you know, there's, a, there's an order of bolting. Is there a similar, well, we start with this lashing and then go across diagonally across the bar and do that lashing or start from out? Oh, you mean like, a, oh, like a torque sequence? Yeah. No, well. No, not, I mean, not really. Are you, are you making sure is like when you're doing this whole yako, you wanna you wanna do it all one time. You know what I mean? Both port and starboard. You don't wanna like do only half and then skip to another one. You wanna do the whole. You know, like you don't even have to do these two middle skinny ones, just the two big ones. You wanna do it one time so that that yako is made taut onto the the by and the pepeals at once and then move on so earlier in the chat i, I asked um if uh if the ropes are stretched before any of this begins uh no the stretching is done during the, the hooky <laughs> for I don't know. I don't know if the company pre-stretches it, but I don't think so. We just take them off the roll and start lashing. Okay. No coconut trees, Larry. 
No, no. It'd be pretty interesting with all these fathoms, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, I think we're, yeah, all right. There's, there's three pictures left. Um, there's this, which is, I think we talked about this. This is, yeah, straight up, straight lines uh, yeah. with a hooky and a frap. Um, there's this, which is getting, uh, which is used fairly often. It's used uh, on a six man, right, to put the, uh, to attach the, the yama. Uh, there's usually a peg on a six man where you wrap around. But this is getting two pieces at, at right angles, right? Attaching sometimes at an angle. Like there's multiple angles all happening and you have to clench it all down. Uh, and so that's, that's the 45 brace. Yeah. That's you why know, it has that groove in it. Oh, it has a groove built in so that you can a, a, attach yeah, it. Yeah, you, you see it on, on the right of the lashing, there's that little groove. So the lashing doesn't slip off. Right here, right? It, it's cut yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. And then also down here, there's a space for the, the lashing to fit in as well, right? Mm. Yeah. Or, or maybe not. I don't think there was a, I think they just chamfered the edge a little. It just sits. It just sits yeah. there. It doesn't need anything. There's no groove there because it's already being held down by the lashing. Okay. And then, all right. Uh, oops. Uh, uh, this is another diamond, uh, but going to a single, a single that's, puka. That's sideways. Oh, the picture is sideways. Yeah, that's the that's the first rail. Yeah, that's the that's the end of the railing by number one. Yeah, and then some nice, uh, uh, yeah, fr very fresh lashings on this cleat. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that might be that's it. That is it. That's it. That's all the pictures. Um, that's like a solid hour and 20 minutes of, of lashing uh, philosophy and styles. I, I, I feel like I learned a lot. I don't know about everybody else. Um, thank you, Gary and Ben and Vance and Joy and uh, Anushka, everybody who, who, come, who helped out. Um, I guess that's it. Any other questions? I'm going to stop sharing. Hello, Mike. Are, is, are the slides going to be available on the shared Google folder, or can we um, somehow see the pictures? <laughs> yes, uh, there was a link to the slides. Um, I'm still trying to figure out, do we have, is, there's a shared Google folder somewhere, right, that for this, this class, I couldn't, I, I wasn't sure where to put everything. Um, but yes. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we had, had, we had Sorry. Joy, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I know we were using something before. Sorry, I saw your email about asking to put it on the Friends website, but this kind of content is not really something that we would just make public on the website for everyone. So, yeah, I think it's better if we put it in a repository. Um, I forget which one exactly we were using. I um, think Patrick uh, posted it in the chat. Okay, so that's where we're also going to be adding that list. So I know all of you were asking for the list of um, things that Ben and I went over last week. So we will also put that there. I'll put that there this weekend as well. And I'm still trying to find the photos of the kaula um, that I talked about. Um, but yeah, we'll put, um, we'll be sure to add some things to that repository there. Thanks. Hey, be before we leave the lashing thing, Ben, a question. So can we assume this was Hoku, right? Yeah. Hiki and Hawaii Loa will will use will utilize the same lashings, pretty much same application, same lashing. Um, a little different. Our lashings are a little different, but not anything more complex. I can tell you that. I yeah. guess the reason I'm 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 asking, <laughs> I don't mind going and shooting Hiki next. Obviously, Bob's going to want to have that done. Um, before they before they 
we're going to put her in and take her out and then they'll relast the, the deck. Do we need to have that done for Hawaii Loa as well? We've got uh, a lot. We, we did, right, do. Mike? I thought, did you take pictures of the lashing before we undid the, the I, I took a bunch of pictures of the lashings. Um, yes, but I, my knowledge of that, I may not have taken the best pictures, but I definitely took pictures of all the lashings when we, we talked about it. That was like more than a year ago. But yes, I have, I have, that, I have all those photos. I can put them together. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Ben. And then I just wanted to mention that um, Joy and I are working on organizing the projects that are, people could possibly take home. But what, I, what I'm doing is I'm taking, like, for example, I'll, I'll take one project and then I'll break it down on what you like the requirements are like the, like say the hail, for example, you're going to need a drum sander, a thickness planer, um, clamps, table saw. So I'm going, I'm making a list of that stuff. And I'm going, I'm making a list of the materials you'll need for that project. And then what skill level I think the person doing that project is going to need. And then I, I'm making a list of all these different projects. A lot of the ones that you guys started before before Bob's class, like the Heiau and, and um, you know, the Holly caps and all that kind of stuff and the mole caps, all, all that kind of stuff. And I, I'm trying to get a list and, you know, have people take on these projects if they can because some of these projects are 30, 40 feet long. <laughs> and if it can fit in your garage or space or whatever, you know, like refinishing a boom or a spa or something, you know, I talked to it over with Uncle Billy and he saw, yeah, they did that before. So I, I don't see why we can't do it now. We just, you know, you got to realize that if you're going to take the spar home, you're going to need a 40 foot space, more, probably more like a 50, because you got to work around it. You're going to need saw horses. You're going to need, you know, shade because you don't want to be working in the sun. You, you know, you're going to need a bunch of stuff, but we are trying to work on setting that up so people can take the parts home and work on. So we're working on that. So don't think like we're standing by. We, we're working on it and we're trying to get progress done. That's all. Hey ben, I also want to give you a shout out for, um, for at the uh, other session for, for pushing PBS leadership on a decision about Hawaii Loa dry dock. And uh, I noticed it and I appreciated it. And thank you for doing that. Thanks, Vance. You know, they forget that we're still there sometimes. I you was know. disappointed though how Nainoa punted the question, you know? I, I disagree a little bit. I think what Nainoa was saying was that he is not the only one that can make that decision, uh, but he is supportive. Um, and so he kind of put it back a little bit on, on uh, Hawaii Lo. What I heard was somebody from the board needs to talk to with Bob's help, talk to somebody at MATC, and if they can work out the arrangement, PBS will assist in any way possible. That's what I got out of it. He, yeah, he that's, was... that's, that's a better framing of it, I think. I would agree. But okay. you gotta understand, you gotta understand the legalities of it, right? Because technically, we don't have a relationship with HCC and stuff, so, we wanted to ask, so it's kind of like we're trying to be included under the PBS umbrella. Right. As a work day is involved, which, you know, and I know I wanted to separate it. That's, that's totally fine. That's why I asked the question. I was like, are we going to be included in PBS's work umbrella? Because if it is, we got to ask for a larger number. If not, 
it's a whole nother thing to have a separate entity there. Right now, I'm going to go to the, the UH leadership and be like, okay, I'm I'm also at METC. I would like 10 people to come down and work. Right, that's a whole different thing now. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was kind of bummed that I know it didn't want to include us, but I also can see where he's coming from. Whereas our relationship with with Bob is pretty much Bob taking care of us. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into that. Bob. You know, structurally. They all three of them need to be under the same organization, quite frankly, and they're not there. I mean, that's the issue. I don't think it's well, not necessarily. Yeah, not I, don't, necessarily. I wouldn't agree with that. That's I don't agree either. You well, know, then I, you're going to be well. Let's put it this way: you're going to be battling. You're going to be battling resources every time this way until they're all under the same leadership. The liability issues. Is it's be a also clear. a capacity issue. You have to have the capacity to malama three different canoes. So yeah, but three under the same roof versus two under one roof and one under a different organization is just really tough. I mean, it, it is tough, but the thing is, we don't own Hawaii Law. Bishop Museum does. No, I understand. I, all I'm saying is, long term, it's too bad that they're not all three together. That's all. That's all. It's it's kind of a moot point because it's yeah. Not but there. there's a lot of history to that. Yeah, and I know. I know. I know. On that. So from on the outside, it might look like they should all just be together. But what if all, like seven? You know, it's just like trying to have all seven, like all Ohanava'a. We can't have all Ohanava'a underneath under the same voyaging society. Yep. You know? Um. But there's one only one H, there's only one METC for resources, quite frankly, right? And right yeah, we're now, we're working on that too. We're working okay. on that too. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to say that on behalf of the board of FHH, you know, we are working on different things. We're having meetings with different people, with DLNR. We're working with Bishop Museum, and we are, um, you know, Uncle Billy is working with PBS with Bob. You know, it's not that we're not doing anything but it also takes time right you have to understand that it takes time and everything is just so dynamic in terms of covid so who can be there but yeah definitely like we're not afraid to ask those questions so it is awesome that ben is taking that initiative to keep putting that out there so everyone can hear it as well yep, but yep. We understand totally agree. that that resources are limited there at metc and so the board is and has been looking for other options you know, so we're do we're all kind of doing the best that we can, but we're all very lucky to be able to have a home there at METC. So we understand that it's frustrating sometimes, um, but you know, I think right now we're all kind of doing the best that we can, but there is a plan, there is gonna be some movement. Um, and I think everyone's just gonna have to find their balance because we know that everyone Malama's different canoes. Um, but yeah, so it's just, it's a, one of those very tough transitional times with COVID, trying to plan all these voyages. And just being in transition, you know, not having, um, not being able to do so much at the shop, not being able to do so much at um, the men's shed and not being able to do so much at Hawaii Loa, you know? So um, again, it's just something that we're just gonna have to work out and be patient with, but there are plans and there are things in the works. So just know Good. that. I, I think it's a fascinating story of the, the Bishop Museum, UH, METC, PBS, <laughs> Ohanava'a collective. And it, 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 it's a tapestry that's been woven for decades. And 100 years from now, there'll still be a relationship between University of Hawaii, Bishop Museum, PBS, and whatever METC is at th that point. So I think it's, it's we are part of a larger story. And our goal is... To work with everybody and and achieve whatever our vision is and the vision is alaska 2022 right so so yep. however that works out that's the vision right i think that's 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 the way ben laid it out last week and i think that's that's what we're going for uh and bishop museum has a role to play that they have not yet played um and it'll it'll come by and by um that's my opinion. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, I know people are interested at Bishop Museum in, in participating, but it's still unclear about what, how you have a voyaging canoe at a museum that is, you know, landlocked. Um, 
So that's <laughs> that's a whole other story. All right, uh, that's about it. Any other questions or comments before we 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 end? Nope. Thanks for coming, guys. Nice All job, right. guys. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. It was, uh, it was nice to see you. Next week, we'll talk museum stuff, unless something else shows up. But you'll you'll hear about it. Have a beautiful weekend, everybody. Uh, ben and I are going to be going over those projects as well that we were going to go over today. Okay. Next yeah. Week. And we can talk. Oh, excellent. Excellent. That'd be great. Well, shout out. Is anybody going to be in Lanikai today that can help me move a three quarter inch plywood up my stairs? <laughs> <laughs> just in case anybody gonna be around hit me up yeah. <laughs> all right man cheers all right hello everybody hello, hello guys